Hi, this is Big Papa Grump, and uh, this is the Board of Doom recap of Backlash 2018. Alright, starting off on the pre-show, a uh, match that just kind of came out of nowhere, wasn't part of our board picks or anything, uh, Bailey versus Ruby Riot. This basically just served to not have Sasha come out and help Bailey in a beatdown. Ruby Riot won, good for her, kind of pointless. And then, the match that gave us all hope, and it was the Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins, the champ, and The Miz. And this match was really good. This match was really, really good. A lot of fun, false finishes. Seth kicked out of a couple of skull crushing finales. Um, and then, you know, they, they were back and forth. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch. And he finally got a, uh, a reversal of a, a skull crushing finale into a curb stomp, got the win. Uh, exciting match. And it was like, okay, all right, well, they stole the show early. Let's see what everybody else could do. And then the rest happened. Next up was the Raw Women's Championship match between Nia Jax, the champ, and Alexa Bliss. And uh, this match just never really got going. It was never really exciting. There were a few cool moments. It was sloppy at times. And, uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a bad match by any stretch of the imagination. But it wasn't anything overly exciting. It was something you would have seen on Raw. And Nia Jax getting beaten up for a good chunk of the match by Alexa Bliss. I know you want to make Alexa Bliss look like a credible heel. You didn't really accomplish that, uh, making her look dangerous at all when she was champ, but hey. But yeah, it's it just completely kind of flies in the face of logic because, you know, Nia Jax should have just come out and basically murdered her. And it was not that at all. And uh, it was, the ending was cool, where uh, Alexa Bliss went for a Twisted Bliss, and Nia Jax caught her, hit her with the Samoan drop, got the win. That that was fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, the promo afterwards, where uh, Nia Jax basically just cut an anti-bullying promo, great. The crowd was booing her during it, and that pretty much should tell WWE everything they need to know about what the crowd wants from Nia Jax. Uh, word is Alexa Bliss got hurt after the match, but or like injured her shoulder or something, so that's kind of a bummer. But yeah, that match was nothing to write home about. Then he got the United States Championship match between Jeff Hardy, the champ, and Randy Orton. This match was boring. Um, Randy and Jeff are way too far along in their careers to put on this dull of a match. Again, it was something you could have seen on regular TV. Uh, Jeff wins with a swanton bomb, you know, avoiding RKO's or whatever. Wins clean. Randy kind of uh, looked heelish at times because somebody had to play the heel, and it's certainly not going to be Jeff. Uh, did not full on heel, but he kind of, you know, was a little heely, I guess, at times. But uh, yeah, it was it was a, it was just boring. It was just dull, like nothing exciting. Gonna take a moment to talk about the musical interlude because Elias came out and. Uh, doing Elias' this thing, and I was like, okay, okay, we're having fun now, and then the New Day came out, and that was kind of funny, uh, with Big E with a, with a bass drum, and, you know, the trombone with Xavier, and, tri oh, uh, cymbal, it was the, the cymbals for, uh, full of pancakes, actually, for Kofi, and, um, they were, you know, they were back and forth, and then, uh, Rusev Day came out, and, Rusev had my favorite line in a long time, which was he, he called uh, he called Elias a, what was it, like discount Bob Dylan or something. It was uh, it bootleg Bob Dylan, and that was kind of funny. And uh, and the Booty Boys, that was, that was amusing as well. And then No Way Jose came out with the conga line, and Elias just kept trying to start in between each interruption. He kept trying to start over, and he kept saying, JoJo, start over. And then each time JoJo sounded more and more annoyed having to reintroduce Elias. That was kind of funny, working her in. And, um, and then, uh, then Bobby Roode came out and beat him up. And then danced. I don't like face Bobby Roode. I like heel Bobby Roode. But, meh. But it was that was a fun segment, so you know you kind of came back up. But you, you don't want a comedy segment to be like the best segment for the last hour, so yeah. 
You have to forgive me if I'm screwing up the order, just because I'm just kind of winging it here. I, I didn't copy down the, the, the match order or anything, so... So we'll go with the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Carmella the Champ and Charlotte. And while I will give some praise to Carmella, because she's getting better all the time. She's getting better on the mic, she's owning her character more, and she is getting much better in the ring. Uh, Charlotte's job was to get her over, make her look good, and she did. That being said, it was not an overly exciting match. The finish was interesting. Uh, the the in, the knee injury, you know, to Charlotte, uh, it was like a running knee, and uh, she moved and hit the turnbuckle or something. I forget what it was, or or went yeah. So it, she hurt her knee, whatever it was, and uh, Carmella kept getting out of the figure four before it even got to the figure eight, and uh, yeah. Uh, Charlotte, she kicked Charlotte in the knee real hard and then did a leverage pin and got a clean win over Charlotte. Good on WWE for letting Carmella have a clean win, uh, building some credibility, whether or not you think it's a sneaky win or it's like there's talent behind it or however you want to look at it, it's a positive. It's a negative that Charlotte loses to Carmella after unseating Asuka at WrestleMania, you know, with beating the streak and all that, but... Yeah, uh, it still was not a great match. It was a good match. It really was. It had moments, but there were rest holds, which is fine. But the crowd was getting bored. I was getting bored. And, uh, yeah, it, it was, again, it was a decent match. It wasn't great. Daniel Bryan and Cass. What can I say about that? Um, having issues with Daniel Bryan coming back with all the dream matches he could be having and being put in a feud right off the gate with Big Cass. That being said, if you're trying to build Daniel up and give him something to do while also getting Cass over, whether or not he wins the feud, but helping get Cass over as a heel, Daniel Bryan's the guy you want to go with, and it worked. The match itself was, again, dull, something you would have seen on TV. The, uh... Cass kind of was beating him up some. You know, Daniel was working on Cass's, uh, you know, repaired knee and all that. So there was some smart ring psychology going on. Daniel was having trouble getting the yes lock on and, and all of that stuff. But uh, eventually, uh, Daniel got the yes lock on, made him tap rather quickly. But then what was interesting was the beat down afterwards, progressing the story where uh, Big Cass just obliterated Daniel Bryan after the match. And, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what you needed for that. You know, the, the match wasn't great, but the ending is what everyone's going to remember. Cass loses and then goes ballistic and beats up Daniel Bryan. Big guy still standing. The little guy got the win, but, you know, won the battle but not the war kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, I was okay with it, but, again, it wasn't an overly great match. Daniel Bryan always looks good. Cass looked pretty good in this because he's still coming back. He's still finding his sea legs or whatever. But, um, but yeah, it was, again, not a great match. Next, we get to the WWE Championship match, which, as soon as they announced that one, you're like, oh, great, Roman and Joe was going on last. And so you had to start worrying about how the pay-per-view was going to end. We'll get to that. But um, this match was better than the WrestleMania match, better than the double count-out match at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Uh, which, truth be told, I didn't actually see all of. I saw parts of it. But it, it never felt like, when I was watching it, that it was picking up any kind of steam by the time it ended. And this one kind of was sort of the same way. They were actually getting to that next level. You know, um, the no DQ thing really didn't factor in until uh, AJ brought in a chair and it kind of backfired on him because he blocked a Kinshasa, whether it hit him with in, in the knee when he, when he was going for an E-strike or something. And it bounced back and hit AJ in the face, and he busted himself open. So that was like, okay, well, we just added something interesting to this. Uh, and then it became Nutshot Central. Uh, Shinsuke hit him with the, the ball Shasa, and... Um, then uh, AJ turned around and hit him right back. Uh, I think I dubbed that one the fab or the uh, phenomenal foreskin. And uh, then they kicked each other in the nuts and couldn't get up by the 10 count, which I didn't actually think was a thing in a no DQ match. Yeah, because not being able to get up by the 10 count is essentially a count out. 
more or less. And uh, there's no countouts in a no DQ match. Weird. That being said, it was better than anything I've seen them do so far. Uh, he, Shinsuke looked like he's owning the heel role more. So that was kind of cool. And those two, they, they can't put on a bad match, but they never quite hit the the uh, the big finish feel. Uh, even if they had just if they had been hitting that and then it, then they kicked each other in the balls, then okay. But they never quite got there, and none of their matches have yet, and that's disappointing because it seems like they turn Shinsuke heel, and now they're ruining Shinsuke by you know, he just can't beat AJ, can't can't put on that classic dream match that we were all waiting for. Then you have Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, and they won, and it was basic, and it was dull, and it was stupid. And the crowd was even not into Strowman's, you know, attacking them afterwards, after the match, because Zayn and Owens were kind of throwing each other at Strowman, and Zayn walked out, and Owens ate the pin, so it looks like they're breaking up the yep movement or something, but... Uh, but it was weird because Lashley and Strowman were, you know, kind of beat them up afterwards like they were the heels. So again, it was just weird booking. And a disappointing match. And then we get to what everybody's talking about now, which was the main event. Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. We had uh, both said, me and a Golden Boy in the preview video, that we thought this could be the match of the night. Because these two guys, Roman Reigns is good in the ring. I don't care what the rest of the internet says he is a good worker he knows how to put a, tell a story in a ring he's not great at it yet but he's leaps and bounds over where he was a couple years ago and um Samoa Joe is Samoa Joe Samoa Joe is just awesome but then they it was rest hold city and I understood that it was supposed to, he was trying to get heat by doing the rest holds that's why heels always do rest holds and he was working on Roman's arm or whatever, but it drug the pace down horrendously, and it never picked it back up. Uh, Joe almost had him out with a uh, with the Kakina clutch at one point, and then Joe, it looked like Joe woke him up by readjusting it, and then Reigns was like ah, and he got out of it, and um, and just spear. I don't know. Actually, Joe survived a couple of spears, but yeah, then he he hit like he was second or third. I can't remember. And got the got the pin. And from what Twitter was saying, people were leaving. I don't know if they were trying to be pa traffic because the show was going long or what. But yeah, uh, not a good look if people are leaving during your main event. I don't really hate the fact that Reigns won. I picked Joe because I kind of I even said in the video that's just who I wanted to win because I thought the win would mean more to Joe than Roman even though Roman's coming off of two losses to Lesnar, but Joe's going to establish need to establish himself on SmackDown, so I thought Joe could use it more because you could, it would be easier for Reigns to bounce back, I was thinking. Either way, it, the ending isn't what bothered me. It was the pacing and everything that went along with it. It made for a very flat, dull main event, and it left a flat, dull taste in the mouth of the viewer. And that's not a good look for WWE when, again, when people are leaving and at the beginning of and in the middle of your main event with the guy that you're pushing as the face of your company. All right, so that was Backlash 2018. Overall, it was a middling, kind of confusing show at times and uh, not full of eh to okay matches. One really good match and everything else was just kind of... So, um, yeah, the... Big Shez and Big Shez and Little Doom Doom are uh, won the night. They finished tied with seven points. Uh, they each would have had perfect boards if it weren't for the uh, no, you know, the the no winner in the AJ Shinsuke match. Um, clarification on that rule: the way we do it is, if there was a beginning and ending bell, the match counted. If the match never happens, say, like the Bludgeon Brothers attacks the New Day and the Usos before the match, and it never actually happens, it's erased from the board like it never happened because the match didn't happen. So, that's how that works for clarification. Uh, but yeah, it was 
nah. I, there was a bunch of us that had six. I think pretty much everybody had six except, um, I think it was Uppercut had five and Flyboy had four. And everybody else had six except for the other two. So, yeah, that's that was uh, WWE. You're, you're, you're not starting season five of the Board of Doom off uh, with a bang here. That was not cool. It was very dull pay-per-view. So, oh well. I've been Big Papa Grump, and I'll catch you after Money in the Bank, which hopefully is going to be a better show, uh, at least more exciting one.